wondered where your genes come from? No, not those genes. Your genes, your DNA. Okay, okay, you got them from your parents, but where did they get them? Like, where do genes even come from? Genes are the instructions for proteins. Proteins are like little machines in your body, and they help you do everything. You use proteins to move your muscles, digest your food. Even watching this video requires the work of proteins in your eyeballs. During evolution, if a new protein shows up in an animal, it can change how that animal looks or how well it catches food or escapes from predators. If that animal has lots of babies, those babies will have the new protein too. But where do new proteins come from? Remember, genes are the instructions for proteins. They encode proteins. So for a new protein to show up, there needs to be a new gene that encodes it. New genes can be created in a few ways. If a gene makes a protein that is no longer needed, or if the gene is accidentally copied, then mutations can build up that can change the proteins they encode. Another way to get new genes is to copy a gene from someone else. This is called horizontal gene transfer, and it happens sometimes when the DNA from one species, like a virus or bacteria, gets inside the cell of another species. In this cool paper, scientists identified a gene that was created in a really unusual way. The gene is called Oscar, and it's really important, like essential, for how insects reproduce. There's evidence that Oscar showed up about 350 million years ago, but the scientists wondered where did Oscar come from? To find out where genes come from, scientists compare the sequence of the gene with genes from other species. Nowadays, we have access to DNA sequences from thousands of species at our fingertips. And using a computer algorithm, it's pretty easy to say what other genes look like this one. It's like going to the patent office with the instructions for a telephone and asking what other instructions are similar to this one. You'll probably get instructions for a microphone because they both take voice input. So you might conclude that one original invention, maybe a megaphone, eventually gave rise to both the telephone and the microphone. So when the scientists compared the sequence of Oscar with a database of genes from many different species, they found something really interesting. The front half of the gene was most closely related to other insect genes, but the back half of the gene was most closely related to genes from bacteria. So this is crazy, because Oscar, which is one gene, an essential gene, is actually a combination of genes from insects and from another domain of life, from bacteria. It's like someone stapled together the instructions for a telephone and a camera. And what came out was something new and useful. Now that's something to keep in your genes.